now we can get started. Okay, uh, Pete, can you go ahead and grab this bank, please? Uh, one of the things that I you know, obviously wanted to do was ride one of these camels, and, and they are ugly. Um, but when we were, um, we got into Jerusalem, and this guy came out. That's the guy there, that's the camel owner. And he was uh, wanting to get rides. I think he said, $10, $10. And I was just messing around. I said, $5. I said, no, it's not. So everybody wanted to pay five bucks and we got to ride the camel. So it was worth it. But uh, anyways, this is just how we're starting this time. So what you need to listen to, let's see, where's, I've lost my mouse. There we go. This You can tell I liked it. I thought the thing was cute. I will say this. Make sure I got the sound. I don't have the sounds. Pete, I've done it again. Projector speakers, right? Okay, let's try that one more time. See if that works. Um, just unplug the projector, plug it back in. Serious? Hold tight. You know, you hear them talk about how. Um, well, you kids, you tell me, who was the person that wore uh, a coat or a clothing of camel hair? I'll forgive you for saying that. That's for the kids. Okay, let's see if this works now. This? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a repeat. No, that's not nothing to do with the volume. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're speaking with authority. This one. Nothing there. Go oh, far. you are muted. Is it coming over the right one? Yeah, should be. Okay. Thank you. Larry. So I like this guy. Now, here's the problem. I liked him. And I would do that. I had my arm around him. I grabbed him in a headlock. I put my head against his. I thought it was cute that he was. He was adorable. And you'll see that's not true in a minute. Um, so some of you have heard me talk about um, my friend, Chris. Uh, lives up in Ohio. Listen close. And you're going to hear his voice when I start the ride. Just listen. You'll hear. Just listen. And I think you'll enjoy hearing me get insulted. Oh, wrong one. Let's go to the next ride. Sorry. There we go. Now, watch what he does to this lady. The guy, every time you and somebody have a ride, he'd come by and that thing would nuzzle on her. Had they known what that camel was like, they wouldn't have done that. Listen. People are better than you, right? That was Chris. Find us up in front of that dome of the rock, get your picture of moving on. 
But if we do, not up there. Chuck almost ran over one of these while we were there. I was trying to get up. They were trying to get in and out of traffic and get out of a parking lot. Almost went over one. What's painful to me is the bunch that they go down. It is uh, looks like I feel sometimes. So, yes, I got to ride that nasty thing. It is, I enjoy it. It's a uh, it's a fun thing. It's something else to do. And that's how they got us. Everybody saying, yeah, we want to do it. He puts the guide on for free and the guide gets everybody to go. So I think we actually, when I grew this little bit of fuzz, I think we looked alike. So it was, it was pretty good. So this is where, um, no, not that one. This one. If you look close, I, after I hugged the thing and got a picture, Steve wanted a picture. And this one, what it's doing right now, is trying to bite him. And uh, when he had his, got his head close, it turned and it snapped at him hard. And I took the picture at the right time because he smiled. And as it was going, he started pulling back. So we got the picture at just the right time. So it was good. The next day, it bit its owner in the head. Uh, that day, um, the guy who was who organized our trip made a big mistake because you know if you're feeding a horse, you put a something on your palm and you open up and it'll take it up off your hand. He tried that with this thing and it just chomped his thumb and he was bruised up pretty good. So it was it was not a kind camel. So that was I did enjoy it though. That was nice. So kids, all that is just a spit and his saliva getting ready to bite this guy. Anybody want to ride a camel? Kids, we go ride one? No? You should. It's fun. Trust me. Yeah, right. Okay. Camel parts over. Um, I'm going to have more pictures of what we're going to be looking at. This, ops, this is an observation place that we went to. And the guy that set this place up, he made it just so people could come over here to the Mount of Olives and look across the Kidron Valley and see the Eastern Gate. And what we're going to be looking at may sound a little bit uh, odd, but we're looking at gate or, or the, the walls and some of those gates today. Now, I was especially impressed with the South Gate. And you'll see, we'll get there in just a minute. But we're going to go down this east side right now and then around the south and then a little bit right around the corner on the west. That's my plan uh, for tonight to see this. So, the spot that we were at over here on the Mount of Olives, we have this place where we can look across and see the gate, but this is what's next to us. So what is this? It's the cemetery. Now, some of the things, if you go to a cemetery, what do you see at all? And we've gone over this a little bit. What do you see at every grave site usually? You see flowers. They don't do flowers. What they do, if you look real close, look down here. Put rocks on it. It's rocks. It's just their way. And sometimes they'll put notes underneath the rocks. They'll leave messages. But you remember when when Jesus? Uh, well, let's go ahead and read. Who has Luke nineteen forty? So the word cry out there it means exactly what it says. It's a shriek. It's a it's a, a yelling out. There would be noise where Jesus would receive glory from the stones, is what he was saying. Well, what did happen is when Jesus was crucified and when he rose, did he rise alone? There were multiples that rose. These graves opened. These graves, tops came off. Stones, I'm using this word loosely, cried out. The stones made a lot of noise because there's rocks all over these tombs. So there would have been a lot of ruckus, but all of these stones definitely made the noise as they as people were coming out of these tombs. Now, this place that we were at, 
is also it had a a Christian site to it. This is just another view of the the cemetery that's there. On and by the way, on the Mount of Olives, um, that is this is like a um, how would you say that a uh, preferred a very desirable place for people to be buried, primarily Jews. They will pay you know, seven figures to be buried in this place and not to be buried somewhere else away from Mount of Olives, away from Jerusalem. You get into Jerusalem. It's, it, people are very serious about it. So is that, do they, do they know, is that place that's been a cemetery for, for like the time of Christ? Or is that only recently been it? Afterwards, definitely after. And you'll see um, as we go, and so uh, picture in your mind, across the Kidron is the temple. They're on the Mount of Olives, and this is going to be newer, but they will, you're, you're going to see where the Muslims built theirs, and that was in around 1500s. So that gives you an idea when they were moving. How old these are, I can't say, but I would say definitely not time of Christ. So it's also got some Christian elements to it. This is on the same property. So whenever you see the, the Jerusalem cross, you know you've got a Christian element there. And they set up this interior room that you go into and you can look across this window and they put the cross where it overshadows the Dome of the Rock. And so they, they did that was intentional. They just uh, they definitely had a Christian influence. Uh, and I say Christian loosely. This was on the same property. Uh, kids. Kids. What kind of tree is this? What do you see on that tree? You can come close if you want to look, or you can, you can see it with better eyes than mine. That's fine. If you want to come close, I'll zoom it in for you. Who can tell me what's on that tree? Yes, Josh. What do you see on this tree? Okay. Any other kids want to look and tell me what you see here? No olives. Those, we're going to see olive trees in a couple of times away. Yes, Ann. A pokey thing. What kind of pokey thing you might, what do you call a pokey thing? Huh? Really close? Come here, one of you kids. You might volunteer. Come up here. Come on. Well, come on, come on. Hustle. Okay, Josh, come on. Run, 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 run. Walk around and show this to everybody, okay? Walk around and show it to everybody. Don't stick yourself with it. They're thorns. That's right. Look at the size of that thorn. So this is what we are, this is what was in this um this place that we were looking at. And I took a picture of it like that. So you can get an idea of the size of these things. And what would have gone into our Lord's head is they would have taken one of these branches or whatever you want to call them off and they would wind really easy. You can imagine this length, the size of that thing going into Jesus' head. And the tips of them, you can barely see the discoloration here. There's like a poison that's in them that shoots more pain as it goes into you. So I was impressed with these. I wanted one of these. It's not where I got that one. But um, that one came full of Engedi, but it was just, for me, it's very sobering to think this is what was on our Lord's head. And it was very, very sobering. That was on the same property. I have no idea what that is, but it was cute. So, yes, it does. So I got a picture of that. Um, heading up, this is, I think I told you, this has been one of these ladies was either on my arm, his arm, or both of our arms. We were constantly carrying these ladies wherever we went because they were struggling. But I'm glad they were able to make it. So that brings us to these pictures. This section is the eastern wall. And that's what really what that whole, this, thank you, buddy. Put it right back on you. Can you reach it? Got it. So this section looks over at the eastern wall and we're going to see, as you as we look through this, um, hopefully I won't hit one that I don't want to. I just did. We're here on the Mount of Olives, the area where Jesus wept, and he looked down here in the middle of the city. So 
But also where Jesus said, uh, if, if these were to keep their mouths closed, the rocks would cry out. If you look at all of the, the cemetery, hopefully you can see it from here. Any of these uh, tombs will have little rocks instead of putting flowers on them with rocks. And when they were raised, they, they did cry out. They, the rocks did not move because people were raised, those thoughts were taken on. This is the place where we believe Jesus rose from the dead, I mean, arose, not rose from the dead, um, ascended. So that takes us, this, uh, Jesus would travel from here to the other side. He would have to go down from here through the Kidron Valley. And it's just a, a very instrumental sign. Okay, so what this is, when Jesus, and I mentioned on there, when Jesus wept over Jerusalem, he would have been sitting here and looking out over the city. And that's when he was weeping because they wouldn't receive him. They refused to receive him. And that gate at the time, this was most likely where Jesus came down, went through the valley. He would have gone into this gate with his triumphal entry. That's the spot. So as we look at the prophecies, Messiah will come. It's going to come through this gate. And he did. And we'll look at more of that in just a minute. But this is, this is the place where he was. Now you'll notice you know, there's going to be a better picture, I think, where you can see it close up. Okay. Let me try one more. No. Okay, a couple more things. That... You can see where it's closed. So the gate obviously was open during Jesus' time, and it was closed up by Muslims in the year 810. Crusaders came in in 1102 and opened it. Then in 1187, 70, 80 years later, uh, Saladin, I believe his name is, closed it again. He was a Muslim. And then the Turkish Muslims in 1541, they heard the prophecy. Messiah will come through the Eastern Gate. They wanted that stopped. They did not want that to happen. So what they did is they set up at that point in time a Muslim graveyard because no self-respecting Jew would go through a Muslim graveyard. That would make them unclean. They closed up the gate. They put a, we know the Dome of the Rock is back here. There's another mosque right inside here. So they made it so a Messiah would, there would be no way in their minds, Messiah would come through that gate. And that was their goal. That's why that gate is closed, is to prevent Jesus from coming back in. Now let's read um, Ezekiel 44 verses 1 and 2. brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary which looked toward the east and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be open, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. So here we have the prophecy back in Ezekiel's day saying this is going to happen. God used unsaved people trying to disrupt his plan to accomplish his purposes. I'm encouraged by that. God is not limited in what I can, in, in, in accomplishing his ways based on what people around me are doing. He can use unsaved people. He can use anything he wants to accomplish his will, and he did it right there. That gate, the Messiah went in, and the gate was shut, and it became permanent. Ezekiel 44, thank you. So this gate was closed. Now, under that, we did not get to go in. Ray, did you get to go in to this area at all? Underneath? Underneath it, I've seen some uh, people who have gotten pictures where under this, you can still see to this day the, um, the pillars, the masonry work is from the time of Solomon and the time of Hezekiah. It's still there. So the whole, that wall is, is still, the, undergird, the undergirding of it is still the original, and it's still there. Now, this wall is important to everybody. Everybody cares about this wall, because you've got the Muslims, well, take the Jews. The Jews are saying, one day, Messiah is going to come and come through this, through this gate. They want it. The Muslims, they're saying, we're going to prevent it. The Christians are saying, Jesus did come through this gate already, and he's going to come back and come through this gate again. 
So this gate has a lot of significance. So let's look another one of these real quick. Okay, a couple more things that happened up here. I forgot to mention uh, how David's palace is not here. David's palace is not in this area somewhere. And when he noted in Absalom, that. this is apparently the place that he had fled. And the key thing that really happened here is this is where Jesus would have uh, made his triumphal entry with a crowd of Hosanna. And they recognized him as Messiah before they turned on him. But he would have come down to this way. We're taking that walk in just a little bit and going back out. So this would have been the place of triumphal entry as well, which is the big one. And as you notice, mentioned this, the eastern gate there, I think I've got there is the eastern gate it is closed, it's been closed up. And all that cemetery in front of it is a Muslim cemetery. They know that Messiah is supposed to come through that gate and he, their idea is that he won't go past, he won't defile himself by going to a cemetery and they shut up the gate so he can't make it in. Or so they do. So that's, uh, that's their goal. It's, it was not good. Okay. So the triumphal entry, we'll look, we'll look at that one another time and not spend as much time on it. So it just gives you the views of this gate, and that gate has a lot of significance for us. It's ironic if you look right there, the smoke coming up, that's the Gehenna Valley, where they used to burn all the trash and put slacking in the hell. So that's uh, that is perfect timing for the Gehenna Valley. There was a fire going on there as we were there. That's where you would have constant burning constant maggots constant worms and that's why christ likened that to hell it was a it was an awful place and it was it was kind of nice to see it on fire and doing its thing that it's supposed to be doing but uh, that's the area that christ was pointing to so this is the eastern wall and obviously we're coming down here in a minute we're going to go right over here which is the southern wall but this this eastern wall is uh, a lot of significance for the Messiah's part of that. But you'll notice this is the other mosque. This is the Alas, help me out, Alas, Alas mosque. And this really messed up, we'll see that in a minute, messed up a lot of the landscape on these walls. There is the one that is, is, is uh, where Messiah will come. Last few of these and the Gehenna Valley. Okay, this is the Southern Wall. Personally, I like this, this place. And there is just a lot of significance. Think of this. Where the temple was set up, the Holy of Holies was at the Western Wall. So that was the, the preferred place. If you were a wealthy person, that is the entrance you would take is through the Western Gate because that was coming in closest to the Holy of Holies. It was the preferred spot. This was the southern entrance. This is where the poor people went. Okay, what do we know about Jesus? Poor or rich? This is where Jesus would have gone in. Jesus would have come in through these gates. Jesus would have preached at this mount, at this, in this area here. Peter, when he preached Pentecost, was most likely here. This is where 3,000 people were saved and baptized. This is a, for me, this was an awesome place to visit. And I, I really enjoyed seeing this, the fact that Jesus walked in this place. Um, I missed one passage. I'm sorry. Um, Mark 9. There's two sections of it. 42 is the beginning. Who has the 42? Okay. Yes. Okay, next, who's the next one? Where the worm dies, not the fire is not quenched. And if 
that I offend him, fuck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye and having two eyes to be kept in the hell of life. Where the worm dies not and the fire is not cleansed. For everyone shall be salted. Salted. Shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness, where which will you see them? It have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. So both of the, that whole passage, we hear see that concept several times where the worm dies not, the fire is not quenched. That's how he was describing Gehenna. And he likened that to hell. So that's why we brought that passage up. Now, this section of the south wall, you'll notice on some of these stairs, there's some like right there, really crisp, good angles. You can tell they're newer stones. Those are replacements. These Right in here, these are the original stones, the original steps that our Lord would have walked up. These are the ones where the apostles would have walked. Now, if you notice where things change, and I'll go up, you'll see it again in a minute. You see how the stones are here? And then you've got this stuff. What this was, and we're going to see a drawing of it in a minute. This is where one of the gates was. You see this archway right up in here is where that mosque is. So they built out from the southern wall this way. This is not a wall, original wall. They built this out to help support the mosque. So this is all added. It just messed things up. And right there, it looks like a window. This is where part of the gate was. That at some point, Jesus would have gone through these gates. Jesus would have gone into these to get into the temple. He would have used this entrance. So this was part of, the, of that west southern wall. Um, let's go a little bit further here. Southern side of the temple, the southern temple steps going up. So the poor people to be able to go in. So on this side, not by the western wall where we just were, it was the more affluent. Also got over here because of that. You're gonna see your bath, your ritual baths over here. Okay, so on this, as they would go up. Oh, we have to go backwards to show you this. Okay, we'll use this one. This is the drawing they've set up. So we've got, this is the one where the one gate was that was just discolored. And then this would have been a second one beside it. And you'll see these as we have another video in just a minute. But the steps were set up so that you'd have four steps and then like a landing, four steps, a landing. And what they would do is, as they were going up, remember when people would go into Jerusalem, we mentioned what were they chanting as they walked up to Jerusalem? Songs of us, the Psalms of Ascent. They did the same thing as they went up. If they, they, that, those steps were extremely easy to go up, and they were made to be able to get those Psalms as they went. It was very much a, a, a ritual that they would go through. This is what the area looked like. And what, what I've got in my mind as I'm looking at these is you had people wanting to come in here to worship. And as they're walking in, you've got either Jesus, you've got Peter. Look at the space they've got just to be preaching and instructing people before they go in. You had people when Peter, he started off at a house. The Holy Spirit came on them. They went out to where there was people, which would have been here. And they had people coming from all over the known world, Jews coming back to worship at Pentecost. And they didn't speak their language. Now, for me, I was we were at the Mexican restaurant today, and the guy's trying to talk to me. He's trying to teach me a couple of words. If I had to go witness to him, I'd be up a creek. I wouldn't know what to do. It was no different. It was worse here. You had multiple languages. You had multiple cultures. And all of a sudden, they're able to speak in those languages. And that was happening at this spot. So these people are going up to get into the temple, and Peter's preaching to them in languages that they can discern, that they can understand, and all of that is happening in this spot. So thousands of people with different 
dialects. And even though there was an issue, God took care of the problems. When he wants his word to go out, it's going to go out. Um, who has Acts 2, 37 to 41? Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children. For all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Okay, so keep in mind the 3,000, because that's going to come up as we look at this. When I was thinking, but when I used to think, how would you get 3,000 people is a lot of people. How are you getting 3,000 people into one place? How are you going to baptize 3,000 people? How does this work? Because logistically, it didn't make a lot of sense, especially when you're in an arid region where water is an issue, and it still is an issue. So I think we'll see that in a moment. We'll make our way up these steps in just a moment. This is that Jesus preached from up at the top of these steps. This is where Peter preached in Acts 2 when... He baptized 3,000. People have scoffed that, but it makes total sense. He's 3,000 can fit here easily. And then right over in this area by those people are all of the ritual baths where they would get ready to come up. And so they would be able to come and uh, have a place to baptize very easily. So we're going to make our way up these. So to think that you're walking in the same place that Jesus and the apostles walked 2,000 years ago, that was exciting. Just to know that I mean, it's something that it helps just to step on it. I don't know how else to say that. It was exciting for me. Um, this is the, the same place I was showing you where you've got the where the gate was, where the other gate was right in here. I'm hoping that this will be clear enough, but this is the base of the southern wall. It is magnificent. Just to think, this is the place where Jesus had preached. This is where Peter had preached. And you can see easily they would have been able to preach to thousands of people there is your all here. Just these yeah. little bitty gatherings. I mean, there's probably 100 people down here now. But these would be some of your ritual baths where they could have done baptisms. These are all over the place up here because so many thousand would have come in needing to get into the temple. Now, where is it? Um, there they are. Hard to see. But you can see down here where there were three of the gates that were closed in. If you go down there, the gates were closed. And then back at this end, when they built the, mon the, um, the mosque, which is right where the coloring is over here, the coloring changes up above this and over, you have the, the second mosque, not the uh, Dome of the Rock, but the other one. I did it then too. Oh, wow. That's the one that was up above, which is why that one juts out the wall i mean juts out this is just for me it's impressive you think about it i'm six foot so this is about a six foot by probably 15 feet stone they got moved and placed where it was supposed to be and it was manual cranes manual labor they made these things right and th th these guys were brilliant in how they constructed this and just to think that what's getting what maybe what a touch here is over 2000 years old and it was it's been there the, the foundation is still there a little bit lower view since it showed a lot of the baths there were tons of them Just a huge expanse where they've been preaching up here. That gives a good view of the size of this place. 
and how massive it is. So again, just to give you an idea, just the size. And I like that picture, especially because you can, it just, the, it gives good perception for the distance of this whole place. So where they were preaching, they were getting thousands of people. Whoa. I don't know what I just did. Okay, there we go. There. So this is some of the ritual baths, how they were set up. They would go in, totally immersed, head into the temple. They would be purified ritually. And this is from the top. This so you can see where they had all of these uh, ritual baths placed and the, the stairs were just coming up around it. And they made sure that they had plenty of that ground. So this picture is wrapping around. We've just come across from here. We've come down the south wall, went around where that mosque is, and we're heading now back up the corner of the west wall. So this is the this would be the southwest corner of the temple. Who has Matthew 4? Matthew 4? Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and set them on a pinnacle of the temple and say unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his, his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, but at any time thou dash thy foot against this stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So the devil took Jesus, we're told there, to the pinnacle of the temple. This is the place, this is the corner. They believe that pinnacle was. Now here is, you, you notice, it looks just like a jet, but I'm going to show you, see this, where it comes out from the wall a little bit. The next drawing will show you what was there, and you'll see why in a second. There is that jet coming out of the wall. This would have been where the archway was. You see this road that comes through. There's always a major north-south road. You remember last week or the week before, we looked at the Pool of Siloam and there was it was the road going up from the pool to the temple. That's the road. So this road was heading down to the pool. So this just gives you an idea and, and it's going to get better. So this is where it would have been. This would have been the uh, that piece coming out of the wall. Oh, and right here, this is the pinnacle of the temple. This is the place where the devil would have taken Jesus to say, cast yourself down here. And it was a long drop. Cast yourself down. So this is the spot that we're looking at. So there's that one. Right yeah. Now, so we've got western wall, <laughs> southern wall, up <laughs> that would have been the pinnacle Jesus had to be thrown off. So this is I just got a still pics of this. This was the archway that came over uh, the roadway in these pavement stones down here were original at the time of Jesus. This is a replica that these guys are taking pictures of. That would have been the cornerstone for, or a corner, a cornerstone for up in this temple. It has come down. The original is in uh, the Israeli Museum. So did you understand all of that? So that that stone, and we'll see it again in just a second. That's the one that was up at the top where the soldiers would stand around it. That's the pinnacle where Christ would have been tempted to jump by the, by Satan. And these stones. This is the main thoroughfare. There, one of the guys that was on the trip has been there three, four, or five times, but he started commenting on it. So I just let him talk. You'll see him in just a minute. But this is the main thoroughfare road right here. And I think that's Chris, the guy that said, why does the camel look better than you? Okay, so this is just a replica of the original of the... At the, at the top or the pinnacle. So. Okay. 
So this is the, the main road down here, and uh, it's time this to is string here. Yeah, go ahead. Shops yeah. Line in both sides. This is Ben. Very small shops, and by the width of the road compared like to that. most of the rest of the city, it probably was the main north south thoroughfare, kind of like in the former Roman city that we looked at, uh, at Shan or. Um, when we began with was good. <laughs> okay. That helps. And there'll be one more. But it, it, you'll be able to hear it. But just notice as this road goes up, it's like, okay, why does it run into a brick wall? Because what you're seeing right there, this is the wall that goes through, and now it's underground. So when we saw this wall, we had to go underground into a tunnel. And we'll see that next week because it is underground now. This, what this is, is 2,000 years of destruction, rebuilding, destruction, rebuilding, destruction, rebuilding, and it made all of this wall. That's what, that's what they dig through to find this stuff. And they get down this far, and there's more under this, but they're not going to dig anymore because they'll have to destroy this to get to what they want, which is David's stuff. So this is, that just gives you an idea. And here's uh, one more. We don't have anything like that in the United States. No. So this road comes up this way. Yeah. There's two thousand right on by where years you walked ago. earlier. We right through here. Yeah. So all of this that you see right there going up, we were walking there last night. All of this, yeah, all, all of that the is two thousand years exactly. of destruction and, and rebuilding. And this is exactly the same western wall that we saw the the Jews had and the same one that we walked by when we were underground. So next time when we come to the other side of this stuff, we're going to be on the western, that's what we call the western wall today where the Jews are constantly praying and doing their thing. That's their special place because that's the place closest to the Holy, Holy of Holies. Yes? What, what he talked about when he said we don't have any of this the, um, I don't remember. I want to say the stone roads, that type of that type of construction and setup. And what was surprising as I looked at this was the road. These roads were more squared as opposed to angled. Remember at Shein, they had the roads angled so the track, the um, the carts and the wagons would not get caught in a where they joined. They were always at an angle. And these were not at angles, but if you look at them, what they are is offset. So it would help them a lot. It would help them not to have the getting stuck at places. And it would allow, especially, I believe it was this side where they would have had the drainage underneath. And how they did that, I don't know. They were just good at how they arranged this stuff. So this is coming back around, I believe, by where the... Um, addition was made with the mosque and they were doing stuff. I think I took it because these just look nice. So I'm not exactly sure what else this is, but this is back at the south wall and it looks like it's a mess. It just looks like a bunch of, you know, torn up stuff, but this is all the ritual baths and then coming up the stairs, this was planned. And all of this was used and think about the, the early church and I guess you'd say before church, if you would, the, when it was Peter and at Pentecost, they were able to use this to baptize people, to bring people into the church. They used the, all of these ritual baths 
in order to make all of this happen. And this is the place, this is the place really where we would say the church kicked off. It was right there. For me, that was an exciting place. And this, this again, this was one of my favorite places while I was over there. Just knowing I was walking around the same area that Jesus preached and Peter preached. Oh, they didn't buy it. They took it. They took it. It was war. Multiple wars. Crusaders came, wiped them out. Muslims came, wiped them out. And it was just, it's been battles constant. And it's still battles. It is still a battle. While we were up on the platform, the Temple Rock platform, um, there's the um, IDF is all over, the Israeli defense is all over the place. It's war. It would be a major conflict. Major. And it, it, the Muslims want it as bad as the Jews. I take that back. The Jews are more concerned with the Western Wall. That They believe that's where the Holy of Holies is. So that's their main concern. If a Muslim comes over to that, even if a Christian comes to the Western Wall that we'll see next time, we were allowed to come in. I believe it was a Tuesday. Any other day, we were to stay out. We were not allowed in there. They're very picky. And the same thing with walking across up in here where the, um, uh, the Temple Mount, where it's at. If they had a Jew, two rabbis, walked across it. All of the IDF guys, all of a sudden, they disappeared. And we see a multitude of IDF surrounding these two guys walking with them so they won't be attacked or shot or whatever. They're, the Muslims take that area very seriously. And one day, they're going to lose it. They're going to lose it. Any other questions with that? Okay, let's wrap this up then. What are any lessons that you and I can learn? I know this was not so much a student. It's not like a doctrinal place, if you will. But there are some lessons we can take away from this. Give me one. Yes. Um, I like that passage in Ezekiel. So, I mean, is the, is, is the understanding then that, I mean, the, the Muslims understand the prophecy that Israel's Messiah would come through the eastern gate. Was it the eastern gate or the southern gate? Eastern. Eastern. Gate. eastern. So they're blocking it up, assuming the Messiah hasn't come yet. Right. Right. Which the which the Jews agree would agree with them. Yeah, he hasn't come yet. So I mean, I, I can see that. Well, I guess that's just really neat. Just they, they missed him. Right. He's already in, and the prophecy was that it's going to be closed. Right. Because he's already he's already gone through it. Um, and so all the, the the plotting of men, you know, to foil, you know, God's plans or foil their enemies' plans to just play right into God's hands. Uh, that's really neat. It is. So what does it tell us about God's prophecies? Can we trust them? To me, if you think about it, does it make sense? That even be, does it make sense that Israel would even be back here at this point? Israel should not be a nation. They should be dead and gone. It'd be humanly speaking. But God said no. And God's prophecies will come true. So what hope does that give us? What prophecies do we have to look forward to? Second coming of Christ. What are we, we're about to do a funeral Tuesday. Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday. I better have that day right. We're about to do a funeral on Wednesday. Do we have anything said that to be absent from this body is what? Present with the Lord. Can we count on the Lord to fulfill his words? You better believe me. If he can make sinful, those sinful people trying to shut out Messiah accomplish his word, he can do anything he wants. We can count on his word. That is an excellent point. What else? It made me think too, um, similar to that. You remember when we looked at Caesarea Philippi? And you remember seeing the gates of hell? All of those, you know, godless 
anti-God religions, anything that Satan can throw, it doesn't matter what it is, the gates of hell are going to prevail against this, his church. Nothing will prevail against God performing what he wants to perform. I'm excited by that. He can use weak things like us to accomplish his will. And he delights to use us. That's exciting. Anything else? I've got another one. To take them. What, what about it? Oh, we can count on it. Yes, absolutely. It can. It's imminent. Yes. Just reading this afternoon uh, about the Fourth Crusade at Jerusalem, and just all the efforts collectively of the church at the time to do what they thought was God's will, trying to do something for God, right? And it ultimately came to nothing. I mean, they they took Jerusalem, and they lost Jerusalem, and I mean, at the end of the day. Nothing happened except thousands of people were, you know, in essence, needlessly killed, slaughtered. And, and all that, to, you know, say nothing changed, nothing the same. But, you know, they didn't accomplish anything for God. They didn't, uh, you know, they didn't, they weren't God's plan for foil. I mean, everything is still on track the way God said it. But sometimes we can, from a very earthly perspective, and think about what we need to accomplish for God, what we need to do. And then, uh, God's just going to do everything that he needs to have done, and he'll use us along the way. Um, you know. That's good. It's interesting to think with that. We will, sometimes we think so, we want to think big, and we want to do things that will out, impact outside of us, but if we'll really concentrate on our hearts being right, on me being right with God at this moment, make my next decision a right one. If we concentrate on that, everything else takes care of itself. I need to be right with God and he will use me in whatever way he sees fit. And I'm not going to foil his plans. God's not all upset because, oh, Rick's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. What am I going to do now? He's bigger than this. Let's see to make sure my heart's right. And I'm, I'm doing right before God. to keep his people going and i'm thankful for that i'll give you one more that i was encouraged by with acts 2 when we looked at that um, that language barrier was real that language barrier was insurmountable could not be it could, you couldn't do anything about it no one would be able to hear the gospel but god worked now does he still do it that way today i don't see it happening could he do it that way today? I'm going to say, if he wants to, he can. He can do whatever he wants to do. He has tied his hands and said, I'm not allowed to do something anymore. If he wanted to give me the ability to speak another language that I don't know, he could do it. But I'm thankful that God enables us. He will give us what we need to be able to do the work he wants us to do. He's not limited. And I'm, he just lets, he wants our willingness. And we're just be vessels. He can use. We just need to submit to him. Any others? I've got one more, and I'm going to quit because this is an easy one. The last one. Don't trust camels. Okay, <laughs> there. There's the last one. I'll give you. Don't trust camels. Um, I wanted this picture. Chris 
Chris took this one, uh, the friend up in Ohio, and uh, I didn't have this till about a week or so ago. So he took that one for me and sent it down. So any other questions before we dismiss tonight? Comments, questions? No clue. Oh, so, yeah, it was a handle I could hold on to, so I wouldn't fall if I didn't hold on to it. It wasn't that hard. I know. <laughs> if the if the camel's bad, you take it. <clears throat> That'll teach him. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for loving us. I pray you would just. Help us to have a good week. Cause it to be a profitable one where we would be satisfied and fulfilled in our relationship with you and our service to you. I do ask especially for the two leads that you would encourage them, comfort them, or allow the service to be honoring to you and profitable. I pray you would use it in some way to glorify yourself. Protect us as we leave here and Lord, just help us to have a, a good week. In Jesus' name, amen. What is it? You from 10 to 1? Let's see.